course, we do have a biosimilar rituximab, as you allude to. Uh, it's now uh, approved in the United States. Uh, it's actually been in Europe for a longer period of time, so we have some experience there. And in fact, at last year's ASCO meeting, uh, last June, uh, a European group presented data on the early utilization of rituximab in patients with lymphoma in Europe. And what was interesting there, and I think we may see the same thing happen here in the United States, is the utilization of the biosimilar rituximab was more favorable in patients with less curable forms of lymphoma. In other words, the oncologist was willing to use these new agents in a situation where the goal wasn't necessarily a long-term survival or cure. Uh, and they reserved the originator, rituxan, uh, for use in patients with, for instance, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, where, where the goal of, cure, uh, of, 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 of goal of treatment is usually cure. So there's some uh, discrimination on, in the use of that, uh, which is perhaps understandable, again, because this is not just supportive care. This is the mainstay of treatment for these patients. And if you're treating for curative intent, do you really want to take any chances if you're not quite sure, if you haven't used the drug before? So you're more likely to use it either in solid tumors in patients with metastatic disease perhaps, or in lymphoma with the low-grade lymphomas uh, where your, your goal is extending life, but uh, not so much uh, the likelihood of, of curability. Uh, uh, so that's data from Europe, but my guess is we're gonna see a similar kind of gradual intake, and then over time, probably broad, and in uh, broad utilization across the, the subtypes of lymphoma.